Aloha Interwebs, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today is Saturday night, and we are here to watch The Hobbit. And this theater, I uh, haven't been to in a million gazillion years. We are in Castle Rock. We came down here because Rebecca's parents live here, and they are watching the baby while we watch a movie. So we came down here to this movie, the AMC 12 in Castle Rock, Colorado, which is only about a half an hour south of Denver. So it's not that big of a trip, but this theater severely over prepped for pretty underwhelming turnout. But I guess it's better to be over prepared than under prepared. They have things taped off in lines, separated to keep all the different lines. This, this theater is running like three or four shows at the same time, 3D and regular, so they were prepping for a lot of people, but not a lot of people showed up. We actually were the first ones here for our show, and they weren't even done. Uh, the credits are still rolling, and the theater is empty, and they just got done cleaning in there, so we're going to go watch The Hobbit. You're coming with us, and we're going to talk about it afterwards. How do you like them apples in the webs? Now, I know we're early, but this is kind of strange. Now, we're, <clears throat> we're meeting friends here, so it's not going to stay like this all night long. It would be kind of cool if we got this place for ourselves. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. Right, and uh, Christmas music. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yay, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Me, I want a hula hoop. Oh, and if you do, you will not be the same. My name is Bilbo Baggins. Baggins's. What is that? Baggins's. Alrighty, in the There you go. That was a little bit of the, the Hobbit for you. Um... Before we get too far into this, I just want to say that I like this movie. The animated movie was a childhood kind of staple of mine for this movie. Uh, I read the book when I was young and revisited it again when I was a teenager. And I liked it both times. It was one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite cartoons growing up. So when I heard they were going to make this movie, there was a hesitation, especially with the way Hollywood does, uh, you know, movies out of books. Coming into this one... I was, you know, with a critical skeptic eye, but still I was willing to be kind of transported back into that world, and um, overall I liked it. The uh, the things that I want to say without giving, getting into uh, a spoiler situation, this movie was 2 hours and 49 minutes long. And coming from a, a fan point of view, I, I'll watch a 3 hour long first section of The Hobbit, and this is going to be 3 movies long. It's a, it's a relatively short book made into an extremely long version of a movie. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are, that are being added in just for the sake of making a long movie. I don't think that this, uh, if, if you're not a huge fan of the stories, but you, you know, of the books, you didn't really read them, but you kind of like the Lord of the Rings uh, thing, even those, those were long movies. Um, I don't, uh, I think you may come into this thinking that you're, you're going to see like a, a large spectacle, kind of like how the Lord of the Rings was, but I, I don't feel that you really honestly needed to have a three hour long section of a movie, because ultimately if the second part of this movie is two hours and 40 minutes and the last part is another two hours and 40 minutes, I don't think that this, is, this needs to be a nine hour long movie cut into three three hour sections if you're kind of on the bubble about it you don't know what to make of it maybe it's it's a rental for you maybe it's not uh, worth sitting you know three hours in a in a movie theater you know, to, to watch the movie but um you know that the, the fans are gonna like it yeah and it, it to me it didn't seem like a whole it didn't seem like a whole lot of, a lot of time. I, I, would, I, would, I would sit through the whole nine hours, you know, and take a break every now and then just to go to the bathroom and eat. 
but I, I like the story. I like the world that was created for the uh, that, that was already established in the Lord of the Rings movies, and then uh, you know get tied in in different uh, different ways in, in this hot first section of the Hobbit movie. I really enjoyed the storytelling in this. So um, even though I personally didn't have a problem with the length and the time and um, all the extra stuff that they put into the storyline to make this a really long movie, I don't think that it needed to be. So if you're not sure if you want to sit in the, in a, if, if you're having kind of hesitations and uh, about sitting in the movie theater for three hours, then you'll probably already know ahead of time that you're not going to want to sit through this movie for three hours. But then again, it might surprise you. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I think fans of the, the previous films will enjoy it. And um, fans of the book might, might be a little bit surprised. But we're going to roll kind of right into that spoiler section of the video. So feel free, feel free to turn the camera off and come back after you watch the movie. I'll be here. Take your time. Okay, so the things that I really, really enjoyed about this movie, um, I felt the acting and the, the, the camaraderie of the uh, ensemble, even though it was actually quite a large ensemble with uh, all the dwarves. And I thought that they all played off each other really well. and It, it made for a very team-oriented, very like brotherly, like, you know, family-oriented feeling uh, of the, the main core group of people. And um, you definitely get attached to some of those characters. Uh, the big thing I like the most about this movie is the interaction that uh, Gollum and Bilbo have in the cave. They, the, the character of Gollum that uh, Andy Serkis, you know, invented and created for the, the first trilogy is just awesome. Uh, I actually kind of didn't like it at first, the way he was playing things and... Um, but when he came out, you know, he, he developed that dual personality in the, uh, where he really actually ended up talking to himself and confusing other people around him because they didn't know what the heck he was talking to. Um, that gets established in this movie as well. So it's like there's three people in that cave and they're all arguing with each other, but there's only two people standing there. And there, there's, you know, some, some comedic timing and, and things that are pretty much spot on that make that make the, the scene entertaining. Um, and tense all at the same time. It's a, it's a creepy feeling, but I remember having that creepy feeling when I was a kid, and I was especially in the in the cartoon, uh, because the Gollum character is really really creepy looking in the original animated cartoon, and um, so I had that uneasy feeling, and I still had that again in the exchange that they were given, even though they threw in some uh, you know uh, comedic moments that made you giggle, and made me giggle. I giggled out loud. It was funny. Uh, I got stares, but. Uh, it was an enjoyable time. And it left me wanting more and excited to see the next uh, next couple movies. So I'm looking forward to the uh, the next one where we actually get it into the into it with the dragon. Bring on the dragon! I'm ready. Um, one thing, one one big thing that did bother me is I watched this movie in uh, regular 3D and not the uh, the high speed. Uh, 48 frames per second uh, filming that they that they did. I'm not a huge huge fan of 3D movies. I just uh, they just you know they're lackluster. It's uh, it's a lot of hype, uh, and I don't I don't believe in them. They, none of them have ever even since you know Avatar came out. None of the big movies that were supposed to be awesome in 3D have really impressed me at all. The things that happen that are in 3D that I like that impress me is when you're sitting there and, and subtle things are happening uh, around you that kind of draw you into the story. You know, whether it be moving through branches and leaves and uh, or leaves falling or rain falling, and it's just little things that you notice that are kind of falling off the screen that kind of draw your attention into the story. I like that. The cheesy, like you know, old school 3D thing where things are coming right at the screen and it's reaching out at you. That that just looks cheesy to me and, and there was a couple uh, moments in this one where things are kind of coming out, out of screen and brushing by the screen where it, it pops out and it looks and it's so close to you but it's CGI and it looks very cartoony so throwing the cartoony CGI things in your face is you know I, I just don't even want to see that part I think it's junk but being able to 
you know, if you're, if you're watching the action on the screen and kind of out of your peripheral or, or around you, you're seeing things kind of uh, in a three-dimensional aspect that are kind of falling off the screen. Those things are enjoyable. Things flying at your face just look cheesy. So um, I do kind of want to... I didn't see it in the, 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 the 48 frames per second, which I've heard very, very mixed reviews about. So if I get a chance to go and check that out... Um, Maybe it might answer some of those 3D questions that I have, but I don't think so. So, anyways, interwebs, that's what I thought about The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and I'm looking forward to the other ones. So, get your butts out there, put them in the seat, see what you think for yourself. Peace out, interwebs. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you guys at the next video. Yeah, I wanted more dragon in this one. More dragon. I'm saying.